Hey, it's Jay Mac, and I'm going to talk about some basic subnetting in IP4. Again, this is just a refresher, hopefully um, from your intro networking class. Um, this will help you get back into the IP4 thing before we jump into IP6. All right, so background stuff. Remember binary. With binary, to translate a binary into a decimal, you start with one, then double it seven times to the left, then place your binary number below it, then you add the values above a 1. So you start with 1, and then you double it 7 times. So 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 4 is 8. You do that 7 times till you hit 128. So those are the values for your different bits inside the byte. Remember, a byte is 8 bits, and here we have our 8 bits. All right, so let's say my binary number was 11000001. So first thing I do is I make my number line, start with 1, double it 7 times to the left, then I put my binary number underneath it, then I add the values above a 1. So there's a 128 above a 1, there's a 64 above a 1, that's 0, can't add that, 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 and there's a 1. So I need to add 128 plus 64 plus 1. So 128 plus 64 plus 1 is 193. Alright, hopefully that covers your binary stuff. And, and kind of refreshes that for you. All right, with IP4, we talk about the first three classes, and there's A, B, and C. Now, the very first octet, the first number in, this, in the IP address, tells you what class it is. If that first number is 1 through 127, it is a class A. Some charts tell you 1 through 126, and that's okay. That's like the usable class A. 127 is actually a class A IP address. Because in order to be a class A IP address, the first bit, the first binary bit, has to be zero. So 127 fits that definition, so 127 is technically a class A IP address. Now, you can't use 127 because it's reserved for loopback on your NIC card. So the usable is only 1 through 126. Now, the default subnet mask for a class A is always 255.000. We, the, by default, we mean we can never change that first 255. That first 255 will always be there. We can only make changes in the second, third, and fourth octet where the zeros are. Second, third, and fourth. So with class B, it's 128 through 191, 255, 255, meaning we can only make changes in the last two octets. And then class C, 192 through 223, meaning we can only make a change in the last octet. Now, you may see your subnet mask written through slash notation. Slash notation just says instead of writing out 255.255.255.0, I just write slash 24 because there are 24 ones in the subnet mask if the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So the slash notation for a class A would be slash 8 because there's 8 ones here. Slash notation for class B would be slash 16, because there's 8 plus 8 would be 16 ones. And then slash notation for class C is slash 24, because I got 8 ones plus 8 ones plus 8 ones. So I have 24 ones. So instead of writing all this stuff out, I just do slash 24. All right, now, formulas. I do them a little bit different in your book, and maybe they're simplified. And there are other ways to do this. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. But this is the way I do it. This is the way that made sense to me, and it's just so much easier for me to follow. You may be totally different. All right, the first one is 2 to the power of x. Now, x is the number of 1s in the subnet mask, not including the default subnet mask. So if it's a slash a IP address, I can't count the first 8 1s. If it's a, I'm sorry, a class B IP address, I can't count the first 16 ones. If it's a class C IP address, I can't count the first 24 ones because that's part of the default. So remember, the default, 8, 16, 24, I can't count those. I never use those in my numbers. All right, so 2 to the power of x, and x is the number of ones in the subnet mask, not including the default. That will give you the number of networks you could have. All right, next it's 2 to the y minus 2, and y is the number of zeros in the subnet mask. And that will give you the number of hosts per network. And then my third formula is 256 minus the freaky octet, and that will give you the range or the space between networks. Now for me this makes sense because 256 is like the magic number, because if you have a byte 
and you go 0 through 255, because those are the total, all the values you can have would be 0 through 255, you get a total of 256 combinations because you have to add 0 and then 1 through 55. So there's 256 total combinations you could have in a byte because 0 counts. So it's always 256. And then I say the freaky octet. If a freaky octet for me is where there's no, or there's a number in the subnet mask that's not 255 and it's not 0. If you don't have a freaky octet, you're not subnetting. You only have one network. We only subnet, or we only have a freaky octet when we subnet. So remember, the freaky octet for me is the number that's not 255 and not zero in the subnet mask. And I'll show you an example of this later on. Now there are other ways to get this range in the space between networks. You can take the last binary value of the last one uh, in the subnet mask. You can take 2 to the y, or 2 to the power of 0. So if there's six zeros in your subnet mask, 2 to the 6 would also give you this range. Whatever way you've learned this, do it that way. Whatever way makes sense to you, stay with it. You don't have to do things my way just because I'm doing them. As soon as you find a way to do IP math that works, stick with it. All right, so we'll, let's do a couple examples. So I got 192.168.100.0. That's what I'm given from the ISP. And so I start with the default slash 24 because that's the default subnet mask for class C. And the problem says, turn this into four networks. So my method is I always start with the default subnet mask for that class. Then I find the formula that fits and I use it. Then I create the new subnet mask and I'm all set. So in this example, the first step is to find the default subnet mask for the class. This is a class C because that very first number is 192. So because it's a class C, the default subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. And that means I can only work in the zero. I can't touch these first three 255s. All right, the second step is apply the formula that fits. Now they're asking me, give me four networks. Now I got three formulas. One is for number of networks and they're giving me the number of networks. So I'm gonna use two to the x equals four. They're always gonna give you one part of the formula. They're either gonna give you the x or they're gonna give you what two to the x equals. In this case, they gave me what two to the x equals. They're saying, hey, two to the x equals four. If that's the case, then x must be two because two to the two gives me four. So two to the power of two gives me four. So x is two and two is the number of ones I have to add to the default subnet mask. So if the subnet mask, the default subnet mask is slash 24, and I gotta add two ones, then the new subnet mask is slash 26. Then if I convert that out, 255 would be eight ones, another 255 that adds eight more, so 16, another 255, there's 24 ones, so I got two ones left, which would be 192. All right, let's look at this a different way. Let's say they say, hey, now you need 50 hosts per network. So they're changing, they're saying, don't, don't give me networks, give me the number of hosts, give me 50. So remember the formula, find the default subnet mask for the class. Apply the formula that fits, and then find the new subnet mask. So in this case, we know it was a, it was a class C because it was 192.168.100, so we know we start with 255.255.255.0. Now the next step is they're asking for number of hosts per network. Well, in this case, they want 50 hosts per network. Well, which formula was the host per network? Well, it was the second one, 2 to the y minus 2. So I need to find 2 to the y minus 2 equals 50. If I do 2 to the 5 minus 2, my answer is 30. If I do 2 to the 6 minus 2, my answer is 62. So 30 and 62, that's not 50. But those are my only options. Remember, you can only split a network up into multiples of two. So either 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. That's all that works. So if you got to fit 50 users, I can't go with the 32 number, I'm sorry, the 30 number, because that's too low. So I have to go to the next one higher. So I have to go to 62. So I'm going to do 2 to the y, and y is going to equal 6. So 2 to the y, or 2 to the 6, equals 62. Or I'm sorry, 2 to the 6 minus 2 gives me 62. So I'm going to have 62 usable, or 262 hosts, but I only need 50, so that works. Now remember, y is the number of zeros 
in the subnet mask. So if the subnet mask is always 32 bits and six of them are zeros, then that means 32 minus 6 is the number of ones that are left. So my new subnet mask is 32 minus 6 or slash 26, which again, it goes back to the same one as the last time, 255.255.255.192. Now, this last thing um, is something that I kind of do differently than especially what, like what you see in your book. So kind of stay along, this is kind of weird. So out of all those two, those two first two examples, we got 255.255.255.192. That was our new subnet mask. Now they come to you and say, hey, I need to know what the usable IP addresses are in those four networks you just created. Well, in order to do that, I make a range chart. And in order to make a range chart, I take 256 minus the number in the subnet mask that's not 255 and not zero. Well, in this case, that only fits 192 because these are all 255s. So 192 is what I call the freaky octet. So I take 256 minus 192 gives me a space of 64 between ranges. Now remember, I said you can do this, you can find this range any way you want to. And there's, there's a bunch of different ways. Um, this might work easier for you. If I take 192, which is the freaky octet, and I convert it to binary, it would be 11000000. If I take the binary bit value of the last one, it would be this one. So remember, this is 128, 64, 32. So 64 is the value of the last one in the subnet mask. So you can get your range that way too. Whatever way works for you, stick with it. All right, so once you find your range, in this case, our range is 64, you always start at zero. So I'm gonna start this first column. I start at zero and then I add the range. So zero plus 64 is 64. Then I add the range again. 64 plus 64 is 128. Then I add the range again. 128 plus 64 is 192. I add the range again. 192 plus 64 is 256. Now, once you hit 256, that's the number that tells you, hey, you have to stop here because you can't go any further. Remember, the total combinations of a bit, or I'm sorry, a byte is 256. So you have to stop because you can't have any other combinations. Now, to get the second column, all you do is subtract one from this and move it over there. So if I subtract one from 256, then 255 comes over here. If I go to 192 and subtract 1, it's 191. And that way this all works. So 0 to 63, then the next number is 64 to 127. 127, the next number is 128 to 1. You get the idea. So that's your range. So 0 to 63 is your first network. 64 to 127 is your second network. 128 to 191 is your third network. And 192 to 255 is your fourth network. 256 is just there for your stopping point. Now, anytime you do this range chart, you should always end in 256. If you ever end in two, uh, 257, 258, any number above 256, your, your math is wrong. It always, always ends in 256 because it's always a multiple of two. All right, so once you got that part down, you can make more space and then you can kind of fill in the middle. So between zero and 63 is one and 62. So, and PowerPoint doesn't really look that good, but if I fill it in here, so between 0 and 63, I got 1 to 62, uh, and then 64, then the next number will be 65, all the way to 126, then 127. Now, what these different columns mean is, the very first column that you did is the network ID. The network ID represents all zeros in the host portion. We use that to route um, in routers because we don't want to create a route to every single usable IP address. If we did that, the internet routers would just be humongous. So what we do is we have one number that's like the ID number for the entire network, and we route to that ID number rather than all the individual numbers. So this first number represents the network ID, what I put in the router to get to this network. Now I'm going to jump over to the last column. The last column is the broadcast. And that would, if I broadcast out to 192.168.100.63, that would broadcast out to all of these PCs. So any PC that's here between 1 and 62, if he starts up and he doesn't know how to get somewhere, he'll send out a broadcast. And that broadcast will go out to all the other PCs on his network. Uh, and then hopefully somebody returns the answer that he's looking for. So the first column is the network ID all zeros in the host portion. I cannot assign that to a PC. We use that for routing. 
the last column, the broadcast column, is all ones in the host portion of the IP address. And I can't assign that to a PC either. So that's why that second formula is 2 to the Y minus 2, because we can't have a PC with all zeros in the host. We can't have a PC with all ones in the host. So that's why we minus 2. But everything in the middle is usable. So there's my first usable IP address of the first network, and there's my last usable IP address of the first network. Everything in the middle is usable. 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 62. So when you make this range chart real quick, then you can answer any question they throw at you. What's the first usable IP address of the second network? 65. What's the last usable IP address of the third network? 190. What is the third usable IP address of the fourth network? Well, the first is 193, so then 194, 195. So 195 would be the third usable IP address of the fourth network. What's the broadcast of the first? 63. So you can answer all those questions by just taking 0, add the range, add the range, add the range, add the range, then minus 1, move it over here, minus 1, move it over here, fill in the middle, boom, you're all set. All right, again, we'll probably touch on this in the first week of class, but hopefully this is a refresher for you and you've already had this, and I'm just kind of like uh, clearing out some cobwebs for you. Um, but again, if you have any questions, make sure you bring them up in class. All right, see you there.